Okay, here we're going to look at subcutaneous paniculitis like T-cell lymphoma. So it can look like a lobular paniculitis just on first glance. What you'll notice though is an infiltration between adipocytes of these round, plump, almost clonal appearing uh, lymphoid cells. Some of them have enlarged nuclei. There's definitely some pleomorphism here as well. Um, and this is a really nice example of that rimming pattern that you get. So it can be difficult to tell sometimes the difference between like say a lupus paniculitis and a subcutaneous paniculitis like T-cell lymphoma. But I think that um, just looking at these cells, these are pretty atypical compared to what you see with just your lupus profundus or your lupus paniculitis. But let's say that you got a case that was difficult um, to tell on H&E, and of course you're going to have to do workup in real life anyways to prove this, but um, if, if you were given answer choices and you saw this almost look like a lobular paniculitis and, and lupus profundus wasn't on the answer choices and you found these atypical cells, you'd be able to choose a subcutaneous paniculitis like T-cell lymphoma. Um, but let's say you wanted to work it up then what you can do is um, typically these abnormal cells are positive for CD8 as well as the beta F1 T cell receptor and then other cytotoxic T cell markers, including granzyme B, perforin, and TIA1. So just some examples here, you've got the beta F1 T cell receptor. In that case, it's very diffusely positive as you can see here. Another example of uh, just to rule out a gamma delta T cell lymphoma, it would be good to um, do gamma delta uh, T cell marker. So here's your uh, delta T TCR, which is negative in the specimen. And here's an example of the TIA uh, stain, which is positive as well, corresponds nicely to the clonal population that we saw. And here is an example of the CD8 stain, which is abundantly positive in all of these cells too. So th those are just some examples, um, but you should be able to at least get in your differential diagnosis from this pattern here, a subcutaneous paniculitis like T-cell lymphoma. You could also supplement with clonality studies um, as well as history and, and physical exam to come to your final diagnosis here. The other thing is lupus profundus or paniculitis often has increased mucin in the dermis. You don't really see increased mucin in this case. So that can be a, an important clue if you were forced to make the diagnosis on H&E between uh, subcutaneous paniculitis like T-cell lymphoma and lupus profundus.